the rebrand. So the most immediate concern was that uh, when we first started canning, the minimum of pallet numbers and the minimum amount of cans that we had to get with each order uh, was relatively low. Time went on and more and more breweries started canning, more craft breweries started canning. And, and when I became pretty evident that we weren't going to be able to keep those minimums, to start we went in deep at six brands um, and you know only having to pull eight pallets per each meant that we didn't sit on inventory too long in the back. So when that changed and then we upped it to seven brands and now we're at eight brands, it became pretty apparent that we weren't going to be able to uh, carry you know, that much inventory in the back. Uh, it just didn't make economical sense. Uh, the idea initially came from, you know, what if we had a stock printed can that had our logos, you know, our, our logo on the top, and then uh, we went to a, you know, printed label solution. And how could we do that to make the cans look, you know, as, as much like um, a printed can um, without it costing as expensive, you know, being as expensive and cost-wise as uh, like a full printed, you know, full color printed digital label. I gave, you know, like most of our projects, I gave JP a whole lot of, uh, you know, flexibility and, you know, you know, artistic license to do what he wanted. The cream milk can and the stuff that was on the, uh, the County Line IPA and the Church Bell Lager, that was some of the very first, very first illustrated work I did for Neshetany. And so that was literally the oldest stuff we had going uh, in operation. So it was a huge relief to be able to to take a step back and reassess everything and sort of think about where all that art took us and um, kind of think about the next step forward, you know? <laughs> yeah, I so, man. Uh, like flexography and the printing process that we're doing on these new labels is so, uh, is so spot on and so, like, perfectly executed that, like, knowing I don't have to worry about, like, stay away on a can surface or, you know, any gap in printing or any expansion of, like, the cans while the thing's getting printed on them. Like, all that stuff is out the window when you're talking about, you know, printing onto a clear film that wraps onto a can, so. Working larger was one thing that I, I did, and, um, you know, knowing the, the printing process was going to be more forgiving, affording myself more detail and things like that was really nice. Uh, and of course just like, you know, knowing kind of what character from each can or label sort of clicked most and sort of playing that up, I think, on these. Working with Irvin, the guys, and Chev over the guys over at Star, we came up with a solution for, uh, you know, the Flexo screen printed labels. Um, actually. Uh, increase the number of printed, printed colors, spot colors, PMS spot colors we could have on each can. Um, so really the cans are, you know, if anything, they actually look uh, a lot sharper than the screen printed cans. Uh, up until this point, the printing process that we have used for all of NCBC's labels has been HP Indigo digital printing, which is the highest quality digital printing available today. The new clear versions of the beer can labels will be printed flexographically also known as Flexo. Flexo printing offers many different options for the printing and converting of labels. Labels are printed using mixed inks along with a photopolymer printing plate. I guess you could say that Flexo is analog compared to digital. Longer running jobs, flexographic printing is more economical than digital printing because the speed of the flexo press is much faster and the cost of the consumables are less. Star Label Products offers both digital and flexographic printing. This allows us to look at each application and decide what makes the most sense. 